performing the pH and indicators lab and we'll start by making the antacid and baking soda solutions. So here I've measured out 25 milliliters of deionized water using a graduated cylinder and um, I've crushed the antacid and I'll put that in one and I'll saturate the other uh, with baking soda. So I just finished making the two solutions um, fully saturated with baking soda. There's a bit of solid at the bottom. And just to show, I used Alka-Seltzer as my uh, antacid. And it's, I fully dissolved one tablet into it. So now we'll move on to creating the uh, other solutions and then testing them with the litmus paper. So here I have my blue and red litmus paper. and a couple strips of them. So I'll be starting with the Alka-Seltzer and antacid solutions since I have them in the beakers here. And now to measure uh, one milliliter, I have this little, so I can measure one milliliter and I'll put it in this cup since I don't have a third beaker, just a plastic cup. So we'll do that first. I'll measure one milliliter and then I'll test it with these two paper, or pieces of litmus paper. So here I have one milliliter of the Alka-Seltzer solution and I'll put it into this cup. And I'll first test it with the red litmus paper. So, put in the solution. Wait a second and record the color of the litmus paper. So I've just recorded the color of the red litmus paper. So bluish purple about. And now I'll test the blue litmus paper. And after testing the blue litmus paper, it stayed blue. And I'll move on to the antacid. So I just realized that I switched it. I just tested the antacid and I've cleaned out the beaker so that we can use it to test the baking soda. So I'll measure out one milliliter of the solution, put it in here and test it with the different litmus papers. And I've also cleaned out the syringe to use. In here I've measured one milliliter and I'll put it in the bottom of the beaker and then use the different litmus papers to test it. I just tested the red litmus paper in the baking soda solution and it turned blue, so I'll record that. And after testing with the blue litmus paper, the litmus paper stayed blue. So I'll record that. So here I've poured a bit of bleach into the beaker and I'll measure out one milliliter and then test it with the different litmus strips. So here I'll test it with the red litmus paper. Well, it's turned completely white, so I'll write that down. Now blue litmus paper. Again turned white, but with a bit of, uh, oh well, after sitting for a bit, now it's completely, completely white. So once again, it turned white. So for ammonia, the best thing I could find was this glass cleaner with ammonia in it. And I've sprayed a bit of it in here and I'll measure one milliliter and then test it in this beaker. So here I'll put the ammonia in the beaker. And I'll test it with the red and blue litmus paper. Here's the red litmus paper. Now let's see it. So as you can see that it turned blue, so I'll record that. And with the blue litmus paper. Seems to stay blue. Okay. 
Make sure we got it all in there. So yes, it's stay blue and I'll record that. So here I have the vinegar and I've measured one milliliter. I'm gonna go put that one milliliter in this beaker and test it. Testing it with the red litmus paper. Uh oh, I dropped it in. Well, as you can see, it stays red, so I'll write that down. And for the blue litmus paper, it turns red. So I'll write that down. So here I have the seltzer water, and I'll measure out one milliliter. And I'll test it. Here with the red lemon's paper. Seems to stay red. And with the blue litmus paper. Turns red. Here I have one milliliter of the lemon juice, which I'll put into this container. And test. So I wasn't able to record, but these are the results I got from the lemon juice. And now we'll go on to the pH paper tests. And here I've made the antacid solution, which I'll be testing first. And I'll get one milliliter into this beaker. So here's the first strip. And as you can see, it came out green. And looking at the chart, I'd say it's between a 7 and a 9, so approximately 8. I decided it was closer to a 9, but now we'll move on to the baking soda. So here we have the saturated baking soda solution. And I'll take one milliliter and put it into the speaker. And here I've put approximately a milliliter. And we'll take pH strip. Test it. So this one is a lighter green than the uh, previous one. But comparing it to the chart, it's about a seven maybe a bit more. So I give this one about a 7.5 just because it's a bit greener than this one. And now I'll move on to the bleach. So here we have the bleach and I'll test it here. I'll get some gloves first. So here we'll test it with the bleach. And it's a bit green here, but it seems to stay yellow. I'm not sure if that's because of the bleach is staining it, but let's try again. That time we got up to blue, or what looked like it, it looked like it was blue. One more to confirm. As soon as I dip it in, yeah, it turns blue, and then after a bit, it turns back. So I'd say it's blue with a pH of 11. And I've decided that um, I won't be measuring out one milliliter because it takes a very long time to clean it each time, and uh, I think I'll get the same results from just adding enough to cover the bottom and then testing it. So now we'll be testing the ammonia. A deep blue. Yeah. 
So I'll write that down again. Bleach. These are the bleached ones now. They've turned completely white. But you can see this one is uh, dark blue, so put it at an 11. Next, I'll be testing vinegar. So, strip. And it's turned a dark red. So, well, you can see the stain it gives on the paper is orange. So let's try one more time. It's probably because the paper is white, but try it one more time just to make sure. Yeah, deep red. So, on this scale, it's a one. And now I'll test the seltzer water. So. It remains yellow. Oh, well, I'd say it matches more with this uh, orange five. So we'll say it's a five. And finally, we're going to do lemon juice. So. Lemon juice, dark red. So, yeah. I'll write down a, a one for the lemon juice. So now I'll move on to making the cabbage indicator. So here I've poured the deionized water and it's now starting to boil. Here I have the chopped red cabbage. And once it comes to a bit more of a boil, I'll pour it over and I'll put a time on for 10 minutes. So now that the water is boiling, I'll pour it over. So here I have the cabbage with the boiled water poured over it. And I've set a timer for 10 minutes. And my Erlenmeyer flask is over here. And I'll set that up. So it's been 10 minutes now. And I will pour it through this filter into the oven in my flask. So I just finished pouring the uh, cabbage juice through the filter and into the oven in my flask. And now I'll go take it for testing. So here I have the six tubes with the cabbage juice in them, the cabbage juice indicator. And I'm going to start with the. Um, Actually, no. So it's to start with the lemon juice. So I'll start. I'll use the pipette to measure out exactly one milliliter of the lemon juice and put it into test tube one. And here we have one milliliter of lemon juice, which we put in here. As you can see, it's turned red. So for the lemon, we'll write it down as red. And here we have the ammonia, one milliliter. And it turns a deep blue. And I'll record that here. So in reality, it looks more green, so I'm gonna note it down as green. Next, we'll test the baking soda. This is the antacid and this is the baking soda solution. One milliliter to the next test tube. This one turned a light blue. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference between this one being green and this one being a blue. So I'll record that here. Next I'll test the vinegar. One milliliter to here. In comparison to our other acidic um, I'd say in real life it looks just a bit less um, red more more towards the purple side so I'd say it's a, a darker red or a more purple red 
Next, I'll test the antacid to this file. Turns a darker purple, a bluish purple. So I'll write that down. So next I'll test the bleach, which I will put into here. Now, not surprisingly, the bleach turned it completely blank or yellow. But we know that from our other tests, the bleach is extremely uh, basic. So we'll just say that, I mean, it's bleach, so it made it white, but it is basic. But we'll mark it down as like white is yellow. So I've refilled the final test tube, uh, the one we just did bleach in, since it had no color, so that we could test the seltzer water, which I'll now test. And here we have the seltzer water. I would say I barely changed the color, I made it just a bit lighter almost. So yeah, write that down, stay purple. So here's the colors put in order. So it goes from red to pink to purple to blue to green. So that's our color scale for the cabbage juice. And here's the color spectrum I came up for, uh, for the cabbage. And now we'll move on to the final indicator, the grape juice. So here I have the um, six test tubes with grape juice in them. And I'll start with the lemon juice. So here we have one milliliter of the lemon juice. And we'll put that into the grape juice. Now comparing it to grape juice next to it, I'd say that it stayed about the same color, maybe gotten a tad bit lighter. And here we have one milliliter of the ammonia. Add it to the grape juice. Still a solid purple color. So next I'll do the antacid and I'll put it in this one. Now it's still red or purple, it stayed purple once again. So next I'll do the baking soda and I'll put one milliliter into this one. Now this one definitely changed. As you can see with the other ones, they're all much lighter, but this one, the baking soda made it a much darker purple. So I'll write that down. Next I have the vinegar, which we'll put to this one. Hasn't changed the color much. Basically the same color, but much lighter, obviously, than this purple. So it remains purple. Next, we'll do the bleach, which once again has turned into whitish yellow. And that's kind of kind of cool. It's increased the density of the yellow grape juice and the uh, purple is coming to the top but yeah overall yellowish white and our final test will be with the seltzer water I replaced the bleach and with the seltzer water 
it also remains purple. As you can see, the only one with any real change was the baking soda. So the results I got from the coloring of the grape juices doesn't match well with what I got for the pHs of the substances, but um, generally the baking soda is more basic. So from what I've got, it goes from purple to a darker purple um, as you go up in pH. And I specifically got grape juice that didn't have any dyes or anything in it, just 100% grape juice. Um, but it could be that there was something uh, with the grape juice I used that made it so that um, there wasn't a noticeable difference between them. But that's the end of uh, the experiment.